Okay, the most important strategy for this question is we should save whole passage questions for last. And we do that because whether we use the no reading strategy, which I use, or not, we still are going to get a much better sense of what this passage is about by answering all the other questions and going to the lines that they tell us and even just noticing what they notice, right? What do those other questions tell us to care about? That's probably going to matter for the main idea of the whole thing. So if you got this question wrong and you got other questions wrong in this passage, I recommend that you pause this video, go and do the explanations for every other question in this passage, and then come back to it. Because I'm going to reference those other questions in my explanation. I'm going to pretend here that I did this one last. So if I did, what, what, would I have, what would I know, right? Well, let's look at the choices and let's use those as summaries of what this passage is about. I don't need to reread it. I don't need to provide my own summary. The choices provide the summaries for me. So let's look at A. A general discussion of the narrator's love of reading to a portrayal of an influential incident. Well, number two, question number two, was all about the narrator's love of reading. So... That part checks off because we answer another question that was about the first 10 lines, so that seems okay. And a influential incident, well that's very vague, what could it be? Well there was a bunch of questions near the end where he gets the book. So maybe that's the influential incident, he gets the book. I don't know, but I certainly don't have any evidence proving this choice wrong, so I'm not going to eliminate it, I'm not going to pick it quite yet, i got to look at the others, but the other questions give me plenty of evidence that this is probably right. Let's look at B. A depiction of the narrator's father to an examination of an author with whom the narrator becomes enchanted. Well, the first part might be true. Now, if you read the entire passage, you read lots of text about the father. But if you didn't, if you followed the no reading strategy, the way the other questions worked, we ended up skipping most of that. And I think that that's why we can eliminate this choice pretty confidently is if we didn't read here, and the questions, the other questions told us to look at certain things, other main ideas, then it's unlikely that the father was a main idea. And that's kind of how I feel. Is It's not really about the father, it's about the narrator. The father is kind of a side character. And then the other piece too, an examination of an author with whom the narrator becomes enchanted. Well, we definitely learn about Dickens and why Dickens is so important to the bookseller, St. Peter, and to the narrator, but an examination? Again, they're not really focused on Dickens, they're more focused on the narrator. So I think everything about choice B is directing our attention to this, the wrong things, secondary things, whereas all the other questions that we've answered correctly directed our attention to the right things, the main ideas. So I think the reason that to me right now A is much better than B is that I didn't read the passage but the other questions told me what to care about. Let's look at C and D. C, symbolic representation of a skill the narrator possesses to an example of its application. Well, I can't name the skill, so that's not a good sign. I should be able to name the skill. I have no idea what it could be, so that's wrong. D, a tale about the hardships of the narrator's childhood to an analysis of the effects of those hardships. Well, maybe the first part is correct. They do kind of talk about him having a rough childhood or he's poor, I don't really know, but an analysis of the effects of the hardship? No. The whole end of the thing was about the book, not the hardship. So this is just, we had like four questions about Dickens and about the book and about buying the book. I, I don't know what this is about. This seems random. So again, the other questions told me that what to care about, and it matches with A. This is a perfectly valid way to get these big picture questions. If we save them for last, we're going to have encountered the other main ideas through the other questions. So use that as a guide. So even if you read, you got to save these for last because the other questions are what tell us what to care about. This is really a big idea, a big strategy point, is it's kind of mean of the SAT to put these summary questions at the beginning because it's your instinct is just to go in order and do them, do it first. But that's a bad strategy because we're going to learn so much more as we go through the passage that we need to save these for when we have the most information about the passage, which is always after we've answered everything else. I get this question very easily because I followed this strategy. If I didn't do that, I think I would probably get this wrong.